Most likely to get sick before a big match. Uh, Jensen. 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 <laughs> Everyone said me, but it's not me. Isles. Jensen. <laughs> Most likely to have a clutch play. Me. Why are you guys laughing? Freaks. This gets actually catch the very beginning of it, but both players trying to sidestep each other over and over again. It looked like Masu was just hitting every single Q, and then Sven making sure he can flash the wall, gets right up against it, flashes over. Flash play? Mm. Me. Yeah. Me. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Most likely to be president. Sven. Sven. I mean, I don't think anyone here should be president, but it would be funny if Sven became president. It's Ben. Me. Most likely to talk trash or talk trash in all chat. Me or speaker. Maybe me or Sven. Oh, we got a lot of all chat this time around. Ooh, what do we got? Okay, GLHF, you guys don't type now. I'm just confused. It won't work on us again. How you guys <laughs> didn't win in 15 minutes? I'll just put Sven. Speaker. Jensen. Yeah, that would probably be me. Welcome back to the LCS Lounge. In case you missed it last week, you can now subscribe to the LCS Twitch channel. Paid and gifted subs will unlock an in-game emote and all subs unlock your typical Twitch features like badges and emotes. Linked Discord accounts will get access to sub-only chat and content, which is very fun, by the way. And lastly, Riot will match all proceeds from subscriptions to the LCS Championship Pool prize, or prize pool, rather. Uh, we've been creating some fun, slightly cursed yes. backstage content. <laughs> There's a few here. of them that I enjoy a lot. There's the the Azale Nodders, which is just hilarious, by the way, and is a little uncanny. And then you have Blabber's Crabbers, which is Blabber's face that's green on top of Crabber, <laughs> like the crab, and it's just oh, dancing. So I hadn't seen that one yet. A few that's of them a are good great. One. A few of them are solid. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, but we're in the draft now for game four, so already Cassante being banned, they do not want to see Licorice on that champion anymore. I think that's completely understandable, and it's also a little bit hectic in a lane swap. In a lane swap, Cassante is king. Yeah, he's, he's really, really good in the swap, and the most notable thing coming out here, last time NRG were on blue side and did standard lanes, Rumble was a huge part of their composition that's been banned out by Dignitas on red side, along with Contracts Ivern. Uh, with the way this series has gone, I am feeling regardless of draft, almost yeah. agnostic entirely of draft, Same. energy do not want lane swaps. Yeah. They have just been getting blasted in these mm -hmm. lane swaps, even the ones that they initiate. So I feel like they should be aiming to ensure there are standard lanes no matter what. And Dignitas should be trying to get those swaps no matter what, because every single time it puts Licorice in this giant advantage over Dokla, mm -hmm. and their bottom lane also comes out with an advantage. So, uh, Energy, they need to play to the mid difference that Palfox has been creating over Jensen. And the interview that you did, Emily, with Mabry, where he was talking about how now they've really focused on lane swapping and everyone has their mm -hmm. own roles, it's really paying off. They are the better lane swap team by a large margin in this series, it feels like. So yeah. uh, it's going to be interesting to see if NRG can really improve upon that if they are forced to swap or are able to try and match it. And a lot of it, uh, as we see the Azir coming down for Palafox, we talked so much about how mages are really important for both of these mid laners as way immediately locked in uh, by Dig. So that's an interesting uh, and Ash is available. pick for, yeah. It's and much, Ash is still up. It's definitely much more comfortable for Jensen. Uh, mm -hmm. Hui has really good wave clear, has good long range damage. And the key about the buffs to Azir, it was armor and health regeneration. So with the Hui pick here, while it is technically flexible into the bottom lane, I think mm -hmm. that is for sure a Jensen pick. Uh, it was one of the mages that he put a lot of time into, yeah. even as soon as it was released. And it is is good into the uh, the new Azir here with the extra armor. So I do like that response from Dignitas. But Energy obviously have been thinking the exact same thing where they want to index much more heavily Ooh. into that. And we get the steal away from Skarner. So I touched on Skarner at the beginning of the day and in the dig game. Skarner in the hand of Energy, I believe, is going to be a Contracts. jungle yeah. uh, Skarner pick, not a top lane Skarner pick like Licorice had. Yeah, and I'm thinking maybe the Ash comes in third. 
Um, that's probably the most I think, surprising I think that's another, that's another big pick for... Botlane, oh, no. Botlane Renekton Fire is big, out. but yeah, they want to deny the Sejuani Renekton combo. That that 2v2 that is insane, and so they're worried about that. They're, they're thinking that it's going to be standard lanes then, though. Yeah. <laughs> and the problem that I would have now, if you're Dignitas, you already have the Sejuani. If you pick yourself up a Ash, um, my only issue is that you're probably going to have less damage overall uh, in scaling than NRG, and also they're, they're already incentivized to go cleanse. Um, so now it's only going to be clear for that. So they're going for a Poppy instead, which, I mean, we'll see how it goes. Pop, Licorice, in the hands of Licorice, he's the mm -hmm. best Poppy player in the region on that one. It is his favorite champion of all time, and it is also better suited to lane swaps. Does mm -hmm. really well with low econ. So I would be thinking now in the draft, Energy want to try and ban out like, it's kind of hard because you kind of want to deny, like, scaling bottom lanes, but yeah. you also want to deny the, like, the, the Kalista combos here for Sven. So they actually go for banning the, uh, the Kalista instead when looking at Diggs' bottom lane. I think Diggs still have the option, grab a scaling bottom lane and try yeah. and swap themselves. Swap. They've got a, a nice looking poppy here for Licorice. Especially since the way that NRG have played out the, these swaps, like, to your point, has not been good. And it's, it's been, it's been more abysmal. about it. Well, it's been more about so like the one thing that I will say in their defense is the thing that I do like that they've been prioring early and you saw it in this past uh, match as well was Dokla coming through mid, making sure that that is in a really good place for Palafox like super early. And then he was also able to harass Spika at chickens as well at Raptors, um, which I liked. It's been how they've responded to the side lanes as we see the Ash coming out for Dig. Um, and also their like swap back. So, so like their actual lane assignments that yeah. they've, as Jokla said in his first interview with Jat, like to kick off the day, they've been dizzy on the map. Yeah, and also I would say aside, even from the lane assignments, which usually when you're dizzy, they're talking about, you know, where people are going yep. on the map. I would also say their execution of dives and, and their dealing with dives has been mm -hmm. way better for on the side of Dig than on Energy. And refocusing on the draft here, the 4 5 has been really interesting because now we've been seeing what is 480 carry bans with the center that was already banned in phase one. So that's made it so Dignitas is already really confident about it that they would go Ash on 4 pick. Smolder is an interesting newer pick. Obviously, we've been seeing a little bit more of Smolder in mid lane, but this is a bot lane Smolder that we've seen in the hands of FBI in the past. The only problem is that FBI in the past when you've had Smolders, his one big concern is his team making active plays around the map without him. Yep. So as long as they are, are aware that he's not going to be as active on the map, um, you know, I think this is going to be a great pick for them. They do have some interesting setup too, right? With the presumably Maokai support coming <laughs> coming in. I don't think we're going to see Skarner uh, support. So it, you do have the Maokai ult uh, to set up uh, a lot of the, the poke from Smolder. Yeah. Um, and then the Nautilus coming out for Dignitas. What do you guys think? I like the composition here from uh, Dignitas quite a bit. Uh, adding Nautilus too, like sure, cleanse works well versus both Sejuani and Ash, but I think Nautilus is a good touch to it. That being said, I mean, I'm gonna go straight to the casters. I wanna hear what they have to say on this one as uh, we go straight into game four. Muchas gracias, y'all. And we are heading into game four. This is match point for Dignitas. And personally, guys, I'm very excited about the Skarner jungle because this has been a wave originated by Griffin, who plays on the T1 Academy roster, so the Tier 3 roster. He has been spamming Grasp of the Undying on Skarner in the jungle, rushes Heartsteel, then Steric Gage, yeah. and makes use of the increased base attack damage, and it makes Skarner an actually formidable scaling fighter later into the game. Yeah, it is a really interesting build. I mean, Skarner just gets scaling on everything from health, right? So, yep. you know, building these pure HP builds can be pretty effective. You don't necessarily have to build as much MR or armor or whatever. Uh, but that being said, it is an expensive build and it's one that's slow to turn on. So the question is, you know, how will that translate to pro play? Uh, will Contracts be able to get enough gold that he feels like he can rush towards that? Or is he going to go, you know, more traditional kind of tank supportive style items? With the Grasp, I would imagine he actually does do the heart steal. He's also got a Poppy, Sejuani, and Nautilus that he could technically proc it off in team fights. So we'll see if the game can stay active and skirmish heavy once he gets that item. Yeah, It's a risk, though, because Energy is in that situation now where they're one loss away from total elimination.
Backs are against the wall, and they're throwing out a huge curveball and trying to keep Dignitas on their toes. I can't imagine this is something they've had a lot of practice against. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. Skarner Jungle is not that popular. Most people I talk to think it is not good at all. So it's going to be interesting to see how contracts will be able to perform. Um, you know, the E can be powerful as far as the, the gank paths you can actually go through, but any sort of CC cancels the channel. Um, you know, <laughs> so it, it, it's one of those things where it's like you're going in towards Jensen. He can throw out the fear to actually interrupt you. You can get, you know, so many different little mini CCs that can be pretty frustrating uh, to actually deal with. But I'm excited to see how they do it. And as far as you know, the actual composition goes for energy, this is about as standard as standard gets. When you think about like old school LCS type scomps, you have three big frontliners, you have two hyper carries, one that does physical, one that does magic, and you're just really playing to enable Pal Fox and FBI. And it's pretty damn similar on the Dignitas side, where it's just three meatballs and two carries yeah. again. So it's really going to matter how your carries are doing. Because if one of your carries falls way behind, all of a sudden, you don't really have any damage in team fights. And speaking of these players having experience playing standard comps, they have a lot of experience winning LCS trophies too. So nine of the 10 players in this game have been LCS champions, 16 cumulative LCS trophies across them. And as we say, elimination series, they could go down energy. All five of those guys would be eliminated from the LCS playoffs if they lose this game. And again, we have the swap. Yeah, again, we have the swap, but in a very weird way, because Dokla is not helping to leash or anything. He's actually just soaking XP with FBI. So what they have elected to do is basically who he is playing the role of the top laner and leashing the jungler and not getting any XP. And energy are sharing the XP between Dokla and FBI. So this does get Dokla level two and is going to be more useful on the potential dive. So now because the Renekton isn't just level one, he could E on you and stun you, so Licorice can't stay around on the tower whatsoever. Yeah. So I actually think this is a really kind of cool adaptation. Yeah, who he is going to be put down, but Dokla getting the XP is more important and puts more threat onto Licorice. So interesting adaptation. I like it from NRG, and I want to see how it pans out over these next couple minutes, especially because we have to take into consideration Licorice has been slamming it in this series. In both of Dinktoss' wins, he was between three and even last game up, up, up above 5,000 gold ahead of Dokla. So they're trying to hold Licorice down and enable Dokla a little bit more. At the very least, I feel like this is the first experience advantage Dokla's had on Licorice in any lane swap. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because he's been stuck at level one in basically every game, and now he's even they're even giving him the plate. So they're definitely prioritizing the top lane health in this game. I think they're going to swap back. Oh, wow. They canceled that. So now it's wow. getting kind of weird because now they're losing a lot bot and uh, a lot of plates. Energy are going to farm another wave up here. One thing I will say that is also a cost to this is as long as Licorice is, is just staying away from Smolder, yeah, FBI is getting stacks, but he's not getting any stacks from trading. There's no, like, Ws that are being spammed out onto them. There's no champion that he can interact with and actually spam out the Super Scorcher Breath, the Q, over and over on. Yeah. So his stacks are going to be really, really slow. And when you get slow early stacks, it really delays everything else as we Ooh. see Licorice try to battle his way back to that tower. Doku probably can't dive him because he should get two, but um, if those spells come up and he's still one, there is a threat of a dive. Did get two, though. Yeah. So now here comes the question for Energy. Is the the trade-off of putting Dokla ahead of Licorice worth all the free gold and plates you gave over to Sven and Isles on the bottom side of the map? Because that further decelerates FBI zone advantage on the Smolder. It absolutely does, and I don't really know what happened mid lane, but Jensen is is already 200 gold ahead. Like, an entire yeah. wave of farm was missed by Palafox, uh, which is pretty surprising in these kind of control mage matchups. He's landing his spells. The similar thing. <laughs> like, I thought you were going to say, he's clicking the CS. Yeah, well, it's similar to what happened in game one, actually, with the Orianna versus Jace, because he started that lane at, like, 100 HP, and we checked back, and he was the first to recall in a better condition. So, yeah. in the mage matchups when Jensen's had his hands on either Huey or Orianna, he's like a totally different player. Jensen because, Mage is good. Because game three, he, he's coming off an awful game. That Corky game, especially in the mid game, was very disastrous Excuse for Jensen. You, it was an awful win. Yeah. We, we were joking. <laughs> we were joking. Between 22 and 25 minutes last game on Corky, Jensen was dead for two minutes. Like, he literally died respawned and died again twice in a row. But actually, like not, you say you're like, joking, but that was actually what happened. One time he teleported back to die faster. Yeah, Like it was, it was such a rough performance, but then he goes back onto mages, Huey versus Zir, comfort zone right away. Yep. Good performance in lane. 
and they want to force something here. Contracts is going to stun Isles into the wall, who he gets the follow up, and I don't think Isles has a chance to even flash away. Tries to trade and ignite down on a Hui, Ooh. and that sets up Sven for a trade kill back, but First Blood still goes Spica. over the FBI, and now Sven is in trouble. That's a double for the baby dragon, and Speak unfortunately is just a little too late to the party. Yeah, Sven is able to flash in and get a trade kill, but that was super not worth it. He flashes in, gets a trade kill, he's going to lose an entire wave. FBI gets another kill. So in this case, even though it is a trade kill, who you're getting the kills on matters so much. And that one went really bad for them as... Contract tries to pull Spika okay. back under the tower, but it's not in range, so Spika is not under threat. Just trying to make sure that they can't push the wave out. Yeah, just having a little jungle fun at the moment. And any advantage that Sven and Isles would have had by getting the extra plates at the start of the game are actually erased by that little sequence there where FBI picks up two kills. So now, joko has got the experience advantage and their bot lane has the gold advantage. At the very least, though, they do hold the wave there. You yeah. know, yeah. jungle was able to hold the wave, so the wave is really bad now for FBI, so that could even things out, and they're getting the dragon. So I want to see if Sven does actually try to hold it. Uh, we're just watching this one more time. It's just a nice little surprise gank there from Contracts. Uses yeah. the E well, gets the stun, and there's that flash in from Sven. Yeah, you got the kill, but at what cost? As uh, FBI picks up a double, and then Spika is able to hold the wave, and you can see still True, holding that wave. Good. He's thinned it out quite a lot, so the gold, you know, yeah, it's still in FBI's favor, but it's evened out a lot because of that small move from Speak at the end of the play. Yeah, really nice. That's some veteran play coming there. But we're back to Swap Town. So now Zven is in a different situation where the Renekton can definitely step up at level 5, and FBI and Huhi are going to be trying to farm a few more plates up top lane. I do like this Maokai early on here for Huhi, the way they started the lane swap with him starving himself of experience, and then also being able to run bot to top and litter the map with saplings is setting up some really nice wave states for them. Yeah, it, it's interesting, right? Because obviously they are thinking, all right, Smolder early is weaker than Ash early, so we want to avoid this, but we really don't want to screw our Renekton over because Renekton yeah. needs gold, needs yeah. experience more than the Poppy does. So they kind of tried to find a middle ground. Uh, whether or not that does pay off in the long run, we'll have to find out because Doka is still, of course, you know, way down in farm uh, from where he would normally be. But his experience is, is a lot better than what you would expect in a normal lane swap. The rest of energy still trying to see if they can continue finding advantageous positions with these lane assignments as they continue to swap them around the map. Approaching eight minutes where second rotation of Grubs will be coming in the next three minutes. The first dragon was secured by Dignitas thanks to Spica holding the wave and making sure that energy couldn't crash it in. And they had the respawn timers on their laners as well. So we're at an even state of the game once again, y'all. And from what we remember in game three, it was the bloodiest one that we've had yet in this series. And we might be heading for another bloody banger. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, energy you now on the precipice of being eliminated. And in this new era, we're seeing, oh, we're going to have a gank because uh, Sven should be able to walk this out. In this era where we see teams change so often, these guys have been the core trio of energy, have been together for quite some time, and they are at risk of getting broken up if yeah. this team does not turn something around in playoffs. This is such an important series for them. You know, they've had a lot of success together. They've been through a lot of adversity together. And now we'll have to see if they can once again turn something around to uh, make a bit of a miracle run happen for the squad. Dokla definitely wants to play at a high level here. He's had massive ups and downs. Palafox, massive ups and downs this split as well. Bad split, but a great series so far for Palafox. And we've got some really dynamic stuff happening around the map here. Huhi and FBI want to get a bit aggressive up top. Meanwhile, Contracts is being a nuisance to Sven and preventing him from getting his recall and base off, so that stalls the amount of time that he is not able to come back and collect the wave. Yeah, this has actually been really nice. So the, the second kind of execution of this lane swap, or whatever you want to call it, the lane assignments, when they went back up the top, because Isles went up there to actually defend with Licorice, it ended up being this 2v2 lane where Smolder is free stacking off of two melee champions that can't threaten him, yep. the Poppy and the Nautilus. So that situation ended up being really, really good because on the other side of the map, the Renekton was and did, you know, was able to and did threaten Sven. He forced out the cleanse, he pushes him back, then Contracts interrupts the recall, so he's losing that farm. So now they have actually extended the gold lead quite a lot in the bottom lane. We saw it got down to under 200, now it's over 600, and the stack acceleration is there for FBI. So 
The second initiation of that swap was really, really good, I think, for energy. And yep. the third one might be too. Sven top, but that's on the reset of Poppy, who's going to catch this giant wave and then would be able to farm off of Poppy if they stick around. It's kind of funny because I actually I actually love playing Smolder a lot. And one of the situations where it's normally really good to pick is into tanks, right? And so yeah. he's taking basically a top Smolder approach and just trying to farm the Poppy, you know, and follow him around the map, constantly poke and prod him. Because when you can farm all of the stacks perfectly off the minions and press Q and W on cooldown on these champions, you get accelerated ridiculously fast. You can easily, you know, eclipse a lot of the, the kind of timings that we see in pro, uh, where people are often, you know, well into the 20s before they can actually get that farm done. Yeah. I mean, under 11 minutes, he's just under 100 stacks. So he's well on his way to hitting that 225 stack mark very early on into the game. And for energy, this is such a late game oriented composition. Really, the only early bridges that you have is Dokla on this Renekton and a little bit of the early game skirmishing power that you get with Maokai with Lockdown. But that Lockdown is always going to be useful later the game goes on as well. And that being said, you know, we have seen Hui take over games in the late game. This champion can put out a monstrous amount of AoE damage. You have to be really careful about where you're fighting, how you're fighting when you're against Hui. Yeah. If you try to funnel through an area, this champion can AoE so many people down, get multiple pass passive procs, which can absolutely destroy you. Um, but at the same token, not near nearly as safe as someone like the Azir, and the same goes for the Ash, because the Azir and the Smolder both have dashes, both have ways to reposition, whereas the carries for Dig don't. And some really big item spikes here. Contracts has Heart Steel, FBI has Triforce, as the Grub contest could be happening. So some power spikes here for energy that I think they'd like to take advantage of. Dignitas have all five members here first, so energy are struggling on the entrance, but Buhi's gonna throw out the ultimate try and brute force their way in. Mom comes over the top and Contracts is in, finds the Impale on the Spica, tries to bring it over to Palafox, but the turn from Spica forces Contracts out of the fight as he now is able to secure a grub for himself. They try to turn on the Dokla, who he tries to jump on and back, but Licorice has already picked up the first kill alongside Jensen, and FBI is getting brute forced out, but now Smolder's trying to make his way back in. Meanwhile, the Baron Pit is still a huge fight going on, and Contracts finally falls to the power of Dignitas. At the end of the day, Dignitas get those extra kills, but the grubs do go to energy. They got four total grubs, so they are going to have that grub spawn. That is nice for them, but Jensen got a lot of work done in that fight. Mm. Was really, really big for his squad, while on the other side, FBI was a massive threat. You know, with that early Triforce, with the tier stack, he picked up a lot of stacks in this fight. Yeah, and because of the item power spikes, energy was pretty happy to take this initial fight. But you can see the Hui's impact. Really just watch the spells that Jensen throws out from a safe distance over here. Really just nukes this bottom side throughout most of the fight. Able to get that kill onto Licorice as Isles buys a ton of time in the pit with Contracts and Palafox. So I think Diggle take this since they were down in items before this fight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jensen chunked out Dokla as he was coming in, used the Spiling Spare, got him to half, then that re-engage from Licorice, stuns him against the wall, is able to finish him off, you know, with a Q there from the Hue. Already has his first item completed as well. The tier is stacking up, so uh, gonna be a little bit tankier when that does complete. And you can see all the damage done um, by Hue and by Smolder on the other side, where Dokla uh, could really barely be involved in that. And a teleport coming in for Dignitas will force D Dokla off the safety of this tower. This should be first brick going over to the side of Dignitas. And because they have a majority of their members on this bottom side of the map as well, that's also second dragon going their way. And you've got to say, despite the fact that Energy tried to facilitate a way where Dokla could get more out of lane swap than Licorice, Licorice is now up gold. He has more farm. You're looking at an ADCS Renekton here with no kills at 14 minutes. So he is really behind the pace of the game and I think could really struggle to get a lot done. You're always going to have the ability to you know just flash in, stun someone up, and that's kind of going to be what you offer. But as far as damage threat, he's going to be pretty low. I agree, especially thinking about the way these team fights would play out with all the CC that Dig has if Renekton ever yeah. tries to go in. It's really all about Palafox and FBI wanting frontline. Renekton doesn't really do much for them, aside from maybe setting up side waves. 
But because he's not actually ahead of the Poppy, he's not going to have priority. So I think if, if Energy wins this game, it's more off the back of Palafox and FBI. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you just kind of hope when you're that far behind in Renekton that your carries are really strong and that you can yeah. basically just play to peel for them, right? Yeah. You just play to hit whatever yeah. they're hitting, stun up Poppy if Poppy's trying to go for a stun on your carries. You know, try to protect them and just be a body that creates space for the Smolder and the Azir to consistently get that damage out. Dignitas summon the Rift Herald that they just acquired into the mid lane. Guaranteed that the tier one is destroyed. And energy are just trying to do what they can to pick up the pieces. Dokla has completed Black Cleaver, so he can start shredding the armor of Licorice, but he's just gonna, gonna concede the fight. Yeah, and he uses his ultimate there to make Licorice reset. I suppose. Now he'll be less threatening if there is a skirmish later. Interesting sequence there, actually, because I felt like Palafox collected a lot of gold. He got solo top lane turret and then solo bot lane turret. But then Dig, instead of trying to match side lane turrets, got the mid turret. So from an overall map perspective, you'd favor Dignitas. But from a gold distribution standpoint, that's exactly the guy you want to be giving those early game turrets to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, quietly, we also have to talk about the dragons, because Dig did pick up the first two dragons. It is an Infernal Soul. They have lots of easy ways to apply it with their carries, both the Ash and the Way. Lots of ways to actually just poke away at your opponents and proc that Infernal Soul. So yeah. they're going to be looking to play towards that. And the question is, can NRG find a way to try to turn things around? Or, you know, will they just really struggle to enter the fight? Because I really think, you know, being there first is going to be so important for both squads. And with how you've already outlined the map state being different for both teams here, Jad, NRG, how can they play through the advantage of the side lanes and try to collapse in on that midterm? Whereas Dignitas, they're the ones that are trying to open up the map further, taking off the tier one turret. Like, what is what is the next step of plan for both teams? Well, it's uh, just gonna be a bit of a pick game before the objectives end up coming up. And it's about making sure Smolder and Azir always have some level of safety to farm off of, which becomes more difficult now for energy. That's why I think if we look at the minimap, we have just a little bit more vision in the river. But as soon as that gets cleared, Smolder's no longer safe. And you can see Smolder actually came over, took all the little raptors on the camp there to get additional stacks, is fully stacking every single wave that comes through. And every time Spika and Isles come over, I like that FBI is making a point of rotating over with his team and trying to get additional stacks from them. Yeah. Again, so much is from the skirmish. That really does help to accelerate you. He's at 172 now, so now he's eclipsing that kind of 10 per minute. He could be done here if there's some big fights, you know, around 20 minutes, maybe a little bit after that, which is going to be a really good clip, especially for pro play. Yeah. and is going to have him being a big threat against this team that has three meatballs that are going to be walking across you. They are constantly applying an AoE true damage spell to. And it's going to almost guarantee that he'll have it by the time Dignitas is on soul point. That's what this boost will give them in terms of insurance. They would, in a strange world, love to skirmish because they can get the Heartsteel stacks and they can get the Smolder stacks. But if they lose those skirmishes, they lose complete control of the game. So I think they're doing the right thing at the moment. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's really that, that kind of fine balance. You don't want to get you know too far in and be overcommitted to a play and get first down because there's lots of pick, lots of CC over on the dig pass side. Um, but anytime you can find those skirmishes safely, it's going to be really, really good for you as Contract's going to look top. Set fast presence has already popped by Licorice. Contracts would have to flash again in range for the Impale, but Keeper's Verdict will punt both of them away. See you later. Licorice, very hard target to gank for, but you could see Contracts was jobless in that moment. All his jungle camps were <laughs> dead. The Azir was farming, the Smolder was farming, so as long as they don't get picked by losing control of this jungle, they'll be just fine making that gank attempt. And Ding Toss on this ward, unbeknownst um, to them, they are stacking over on that. They're trying to set up for a potential pick here prior to Dragon. Of course, Palafox now knows that it's just Speaker there, so he's trying to um, play a little bit dumb, see if he can force him into committing. And then he had everyone there behind him. Spika does not go for it, uh, knowing that no one is there to back him up just yet. And Licorice and Dokla both have TP available. So both teams posturing like they want to fight for this. I do think we're going to have a big battle potentially here over this third dragon. 190 stacks on Smolder. He's just 35 away from hitting that Elder Execute buff for the side of FBI. Dignitas are burning down this dragon very fast, and the control ward blocks out all vision. The Maokai ultimate is going to give them brief vision, seeing that it's 4K, and Contrax is in the pit. Whoa. Flash and Pale 
finds two. Isles is going to try to stall the back line. Massive CC on to FBI and Palafox, and he tries to come in. Swoop and pushing Isles back in. Who he's the first one to fall, but the dragon is secured by contracts, and energy walk away with more kills. That is a massive fight for energy. Contracts absolutely popped off here. Not only does he get the double ult to initiate the fight, he finally gets the steal. This one pops over to them. You can see FBI even more accelerated in this game. Let's check it out one more time. And you can watch on the other side, Jensen actually got so much damage down, but they just really weren't able to follow up and capitalize on that as they all group together here. Contracts goes in, follows, finds a multi-man impale, but then watch the damage as he gets out of this here from Jensen. You can see the Nautilus all came through over onto Smolder. The ulti goes down, the spiraling despair that's on Contracts actually gets pulled back in onto FBI, and he snaps him in with the E into the ulti, so FBI almost gets first down. But there's no one else that can get in the back line. Zven yeah. is just stuck hitting frontliners that entire fight. And they're not able to actually finish off any it's of those kills. So a massive win <laughs> for energy. Garner's back. Yep. I I know we're going to be seeing more flowers face on the, the POV sometime <laughs> soon. <laughs> Who he might have found another pick on the Isles. He doesn't have splash from the prior skirmish. Sven tries to throw on an arrow, but I think the fight is already lost. Speak of flashing over the red buff wall just to escape. Looks like the momentum is turning towards energy. Game five could be on its way, but that's also a little too early to call because it is just 1,800 gold and the fights continue. And contracts. I'm not sure if he was able to steal the red buff away, but he's got Spika locked in this wall. He's got That's nowhere Baron. else to run. And yeah, 21 minutes. Baron is alive for the taking, and energy should be able to turn for it. And Denson just used his ult. It did force the flash from who he knows. They're not actually going to start it. I thought for sure they would go to it, but they feel it's too risky right now. Mm. Licorice is healthy. There's lots of AoE, so they don't want to risk anything and feeling like they're in a good position. I thought at the very least they would start it and look for yeah. a turn, um, but they elect not to do so. And we'll have to see if they can capitalize on any of these missing summoners now, as so many people are missing those flashes and could be targets in these coming fights. I mean, FBI is that big, juicy target that you really want to kill. 600 gold bounty on him and no flash. Looking for Jensen, but there's no more impale from contracts as he already used it in that prior skirmish, so Jensen should be fine. And honestly, as long as contracts doesn't have flash, there's just no way you ever get up onto the way. Like, yeah. with the E, you have to walk straight at him, yeah. and he can fear you out of that every single time. Not yeah. only does it push you away, it cancels your E, so uh, any CC does that. So it is really, really difficult to actually get in on that way without some sort of uh, player to actually set you up. This is really looking like energy momentum to me, and FBI has played such a clean game, but the way he got to this point was through energy's best lane swap yet. Mm -hmm. We started the series with them having an absolutely disastrous lane swap, failing a dive and getting dove, and then they kind of just stuck to it. This time, they had a new variation where they actually had Dokla getting level 2 with his AD carry, so he couldn't get completely starved. But the biggest beneficiary here was FBI. Yeah. 236 stacks at 22 minutes. Very good. Yeah, it's, it's really good. I just really liked, especially the extended part of the play where he farmed so many stacks off of Isles, off of Licorice. Yeah. You know, that really did accelerate him because it is a risk in a lane swap to really put yourself behind that clock. Uh, an FBI now in a great spot, and especially when you get the rapid fire, it's such a big spike for Smolder because then it's so easy to just apply this Q, and you're constantly splashing that true damage back onto multiple people, burning them down. You really do become a very frustrating champion to deal with because it's not just about the high DPS, which Smolder does have, it's about that poke and prod that is so tough to stop. The proactive adaptations from energy has now put themselves into a spot where they're not that far ahead in gold, but considering the champions that they've had, they're at the points of the game where Dignitas are the most terrified, and they're still waiting for Jensen to really come online. You also have to note, though, that Zven has quietly uh, had quite a good game himself. He's actually that far behind where FBI is, mm. uh, and as he builds in towards that third item, he is going to be pretty threatening for the frontliners. Yes, it's a pretty tanky contract, but he doesn't have any armor, so you can punch through that pretty quickly. Same thing with Dokla. Dokla's going to be a lot less tanky than uh, Licorice over on the other side, and the Maokai as well, also generally less tanky uh, than Isles. So, you know, if they can set up him and Zven well, I do think they can win potentially front-to-back fights still. Rest of Dignitas trying to take up space in the mid lane. Thankfully for them, they still have the safety of this Tier 1 turret. 
Whereas for energy, they lost theirs almost 10 minutes ago. Contrast is going to look for the engage, but gets slowed. Cancels the E. The rest of energy just starting to slowly corral and get ready to push Dignitas off the tier one. We're talking about who's stronger, though. Jensen's the one that just received that Knight's Vow from Spica because he is the one who needs to do the most damage in this team fight for them to win. I think Sven's not quite there, even with his goal. He needs to complete that third item at least. So it's it's an incredibly difficult Drake to contest here. Licorice trying to see if he Look can be the first one Look in. Palfox. Palfox is waiting for the rest of the back line to swoop on it. Mom comes through. He gets slowed, but FBI got punted out by Licorice, yeah. and now Energy have to stall because more of their damage dealers was taken out of the fight, but no one else from Dignitas could really step on up despite FBI getting punted, and that's the second dragon for Energy. Yeah, this is the power of being there first. The setup from Energy was really, really good. Dignitas is having to funnel through this kind of side angle. Palafox is threatening on the side, so if you fully commit your back line to that fight he's gonna swoop in he's gonna flash on them he's gonna ult them into the team and you yeah. are gonna be toast so it made it very very difficult to approach even when they knocked out the smolder they still didn't feel comfortable to fully commit to it because Spica had gotten chunked down so again just watch Palafox his positioning right here they have no vision on him if you walk up too far you basically can't go past that line as Dignitas back line or you're gonna be getting attacked by Palafox and by these members from this side so I think it was really nice positioning here from NRG even with the good all from Licorice, didn't Ooh. it? Oh, might catch Jensen. Contracts is waiting for the lockdown. I'm not sure if Impale is at the ready quite yet, but he's going to flash forward, guarantees the slow from the queue. Palfox arrives. There's the Impale, tries to bring him back, but Isles does a great job of stuffing the engage and ensuring the safety of his mid laner. And now they're, they're trying to maybe look for a turn. Severing Bolt does some decent damage, but it's the fight is over. They get the flash out of Jensen, and they have very high Baron damage, so Dig have to at least respect it. I gotta say, though, Palafox is having his best series of the year so far. He's been a performer in all four games, really great team fighting, and he made this tweet right after their loss that he just feels like he's had this mental block. Maybe he has gotten over it for this series, and he needs to continue to perform for their season to stay alive. Absolutely. I have to give credit to Contracts there. Found a nice angle coming over the wall uh, that Jensen did not see in time, so couldn't get the Fear to actually interrupt him. I'm not sure if it was uh, caught window shopping, because it is you know, fairly subtle, that little marker on the wall that yeah. Skarner's coming over. So yeah. you really have to be watching and see that specific spot on the wall to see that he is coming over to be able to actually interrupt that. And getting the flash off Jensen is so big. Jensen has no Zonias. He really has very little defensive capability. Engage from Spico lands right on the contracts, but he just speeds on out with his E. And now Palfox, oh, oh, what? Oh, ah! He dashed in, he's forced to flash out, but that could oh, be a big no. punish. Oh no, Dignitas capitalized on a misplay from Palafox. And now Energy are on the run. Another Severing Bolt finds its mark on the Dokla. And just like that, Dignitas get two free picks. Palafox might have just thrown the entire series. Eden accidentally realized his mistake, tries to flash out, then ults nothing as he's on the retreat. Instead of just committing to the play, that was a complete panic moment for him. And now Digger on the Baron. It's now up to Contracts FBI and Huhi to salvage this situation. Isles is looping around for a deep flank, ready for the turn. The arrow's back up again. It's on the Contracts. Big two man impale. FBI's going to pop Spika. Looks for Licorice now. But now it's up to Contracts and FBI, who he has been taken out of the fight. And just on the Elder Execute alone from FBI Smolder, it's Ooh. enough to stop Dignitas from taking the Baron. They're gonna keep Even chasing. by losing Palafox, he teleports back into the fight. And now they have the advantage. Sven is caught out. Jensen's got nowhere else to run. Somehow, some way, energy are bailed out by the power of the baby dragon. And listen, this is why it's a team game because Palafox had been playing great. He makes what could have been a game or season ending mistake and everybody else on energy steps up to push Dignitas off the Baron there. FBI is absolutely gargantuan on that smolder. And here it is one more time from that initial play. Palafox oh. just goes back in and I thought at first, oh, he's going back in for yeah. a re-engage, but instead he doesn't all, he flashes back out, all something dies and then you think, okay, this could be it. He realizes, oh, you can, don't read those <laughs> lips. Uh, no audio on this one. And there is uh, the reaction from Thinkard, who you know, knows how bad this was. But then they just get a little bit too close. The double ulti there from Contracts, pulling them back in FBI was massive. And Sven and Jensen were softened up, so they couldn't actually push forward yeah. to get a kill, because one Q from FBI could get them into XE range. 
Also, Zven Adamana here. The size of that shield from Contracts goes to show how scaled he is from health <laughs> as well. Man, who he is always having a good time. Even when he potentially watches Vid later throw the game, he's like, no, guys, we're still in it. And energy, persevere, rally behind the power of this Skarner, of this Smolder. They get the Baron buff, and they're back to being in the driver's seat and sieging into Dignitas' face. FBI is also going into uh, late game kind of a more poke style build, which I actually really like. You can go Leandry's or Riftmaker, a nice sidestep. Uh, both are quite good at this point in the game, and it really just facilitates that poke more and more and more. It makes your W even more annoying. If you go the Riftmaker route, obviously you have uh, some sustain from that, uh, but I do think it's kind of an underutilized part of the Smolder kit and uh, quite can be quite powerful late in the game. Doko's gonna face check the brush, get stunned up by Spika. And he's going to absorb it with the Dominus. Uh, FBI? FBI might be in trouble, but the Death Charge does not lock him down for further damage as he just flap laps away. Doku is still Palfox in trouble on coming. the left oh, side tracks. of the flank. Huge spiraling despair. Paul Fox arrives to the party, and now maybe Energy can regroup. Dignitas have already lost out on Jensen, but Energy lose Dokla. Oh, such a messy fight right there as Dokla was getting collapsed on. Contracts landed a huge ultimate right at that mid turret to be able to pick up Jensen. That should be enough to secure Energy this third Infernal Drake. Yeah, it's looking like it will. And man, if you get a four Infernal Drake, Infernal Soul, you are doing so much damage, especially for FBI, who's already monster fed 9 0 and 4. We can watch this one more time. As Dignitas trying to defend this tower very, very heavily. They do push out Doku, but look at that. That one Q on his Ven is like a third of his health that he lost. Contracts comes in, they realize, hey, we can actually finish the tower and make a fight happen. Beautiful flank at the end by Palafox. Made sure that the rest of Dignitas couldn't continue to fight through them. I'd say still not your cleanest approach if you're energy, because I think if they're playing behind this smolder, that not much can go wrong at the moment, because my goodness, Leandry's completed now. Vamp Scepter, Probably his BT last, last. as well. Yeah, just for some defensive yep. yeah. and ability to stay in the fight, because Huey, he exactly. needs to be able to heal up the poke. That's really the only way he's being threatened is if he is getting poked with three big frontliners ahead of you with the ability to actually fly over walls with your summoners up. You're really only going to die if you get poked down first, so I think it is smart. He is monstrously strong. An arrow will find FBI, but he instantly cleanses it, and they turn the target onto Jensen. He flashes over the Emperor's okay. Divide, spiraling the spear right on top, but he's got the stasis to block out the damage. Licorice tries to slam into the wall, and they find the kill trade back, but FBI and Contracts are still alive, and they can Ooh. rally and try and stay alive in this fight. Oh, Another done. flash slam right into FBI. They find their target. Dignitas persevere through the power of the dragon. Contracts is going low. Dokla tries to save the fight, and Contracts finds one trade before falling to Licorice's Poppy. And now Dokla, maybe he can ah! find something on Seth. Big Dokes will stall the fight out for energy. And now speak on Licorice. Eventually, maybe they'll take out this crocodile, but Dokla is really oh. making the work for it. We've got another banger on our hands. Never a dull moment in energy versus Dignitas. This starts as a 4v5. Renekton is in the mid lane. The arrow lands and burns the cleanse, and it's energy who want to go for Jensen. But Palfox really just needs to slow things down. He goes in with the ulti here, whiffs again on the ulti, and it's because he put himself in such a bad position that the follow-up is even able to happen. Licorice comes in, stuns him right off the Zonias. They get that kill. They get access to the back line. It was a great sidestep there on the hook from Isles that did extend the fight. But then that slam from Licorice. He set up the first kill on Palafox. He gets the second onto the Smolder. And that 1,000 gold shutdown goes to Zven. So gold-wise, he's actually equal with the Smolder now. So it's not just the Hui show as Jensen is happy that his team is able to turn that around after he dies. And Energy is feeling it a little bit right now. They cannot yeah. let this one slip through their fingers. I mean, Pal Fox is just trying to do too much. Like, I, it, that felt like one of those situations where maybe he's trying to make up for the previous play. You do not need to be sliding I into mean, the tower. Look you're, at his build. Yeah. That's too much. I mean, it, your, your bot lane is so strong. All you need to do is stand on the smolder and push anyone away who comes. Like, that's it. That's your whole job. You just need to make space for the smolder. FBI will win you the game. He has 400 stacks. He's ridiculously fed. He just has to poke and prod away, and eventually Dignitas will get pushed back because they have very little, if any, sustain across their entire team. Yeah. And now Energy have to regroup. They need to remind themselves 
how to calmly play the rest of the game out. They have this huge late game advantage, but they've been constantly slipping up on some of these key targets against Dignitas, and they've been making the moments Fight. count. Engage onto Dokla. Bomb pushes them contracts. back off. Dokla is falling to the spiral Jen. despair. He tries to go in. Jensen is caught by contract. Big target and energy are going to be able to take out Sven first. And now they're looking for the next target. I think that one is Licorice. And energy now have a five on three advantage. Palafox tries to go in. Finds the scoop on the aisles, but it's another target that they can drop in a body bag. Dignitas are now falling on the reliance of Jensen and Spica to keep their base alive. That is a big fight win for Energy. They do not have a minion wave at the moment. Contracts has been so clutch in this Skarner game, finding engage after engage. Baron up, Soul in 45 seconds. This, this one's not over yet. No, they're gonna try to go for it, but we do see Spica in the area has no flash. Jensen almost has the ulti back up, but look at who he trying to find the angle and has flash available, so could look for Jensen if they go for it. Yeah. They're gonna back it up. I think this is the right choice, absolutely. Yeah. Especially with Soul on the horizon here in 20 seconds. If you die going for Baron, then Soul is lost. Yeah. If you just give this up, you can go down towards this dragon and potentially move yourself to Soul Point here. So we'll see if Energy can get back out on the map fast enough to actually contest this. This is pretty Ooh. tight. I mean, Dokla has teleport, but they're running out pretty quick and, and they're, they're setting waiting. a trap. They're waiting in the bush to see if Palafox gets too close, but Shit. Dignitas are spotted as they move. They're gonna try and burst it. Yep. Flip it. Contracts does not have flash. He would have to make a slow approach with that E. The Ishtal's impact still ready and available, but Spika secures the dragon. The Infernal Soul is denied, and a huge objective bounty is claimed for the side of Dignitas. Yeah, really well played there by Dig. Now if you can just actually withstand the onslaught of this Baron buff, and they have very good wave clear with the Huey, then all of a sudden the game is actually a lot closer than it looks, because you add about 4K for the soul. You know, potentially if they could get that, that would be huge. Arrow right on Nadokla, but yes. he takes it. Maokai Root stuns up the front line of Dignitas. Isles is rooted as they go in for the engage. Spiraling the spare right on who He flashes back into the oh. team. That big, a, a big chunk on Nadokla, but Energy got what they came for and take down the inhibitor. That Smolder is accidentally killing people at this point. He landed one Q on Jensen. Jensen went to half health. He completely opened up the inhibitor there for Energy, and they still have a long time on this Baron. FBI full health. They're going to go for more. Now rotating over to the top side of the map, Baron Buff is still alive and available, but it looks like Energy are going to stop the siege for now and try to deny even more resources from Dignitas' top red quadrant. We'll see if they want to continue the siege. Sven gets some decent vision down on the top quadrant with that Hawk shot, and Energy still staying around looking for another pick. It's just the RFC poke every time, and it's actually crazy that Jensen has more damage, but FBI has been dumping on I mean, them. Jensen has been doing so much. You know, it is much more quiet because it's harder for them to actually follow up on it, where FBI has just been executing people left and right. This is the power of the Smolder. And look at Contracts. Contracts has done more damage than Azir in a nearly 40-minute game. Contracts has been monstrous for them this game, including setting up that pick on Zen in that previous fight around mid lane. He is really doing a lot of the heavy lifting for this one when Contract is having an awful game. And with Doko pushing on the bottom side of the map, Energy can maintain a four-man push on the top side. Sven already used the arrow. The Keeper's Verdict was used to punt out Contracts, but he returns back to the top turret. The route from Puhi oh. will sun up Spika. He throws out the Glacial Prison, stops Energy in their tracks but they are just brute forcing their way through and they only care about taking out the inhibitor at all costs. Dokla is fighting Licorice on the bottom side of the map and he's got the power of the Baron minion wave to make sure that he can win and push him off. They're rotating over to seeing if they can take out this inhibitor turret as well. Energy now corralling through, looking for Licorice. Good W, blocks the dash in. Who he goes in, contracts. Now with the install impact, flash impact. Impale right onto the back line. Jensen could be the next target. He's getting burst and low, that's the execute! Energy might just have everything they need to close this game out. The first Nexus turret will fall. Dignitas trying to stand tall and endure the onslaught, but this dragon is just pumping out the damage. And we're about to go to game five in the bloodiest series we've seen yet. 12, one and seven, make it 13, one and seven, and he's still going for more on the Smolder FBI. Popping off this game and contracts on the Skarner. How about that? Played such a good game, finding key alt after key alt, including that final fight.
getting in onto Jensen, gets him with the Impale, locks him down, and without Jensen there, they just don't have nearly enough to punch through that front line. FBI is definitely the star of this game, but to me, it's all about that contract, Skarner. He yeah. made so many engages, pulling that out of his deep back pocket and making it work when they're on the brink of elimination. Energy, bring us to match point on both sides. Cue up the silver scrapes, y'all. We're going to game five. Oh, 